This episode of That Boy's Got Knowledge was recorded at the House of Bombshell, located at 3601 Clarks Lane, Baltimore, Maryland. Hey girl, hey. So now we are back with another episode of That Girl Got Knowledge. My name's Janae. I'm Ristique. <laughs> I'm Ebony. Yes, and today we're going to be talking about beauty standards along with fitness and wellness. So I just want to open up the floor to you guys. Who sets, or what, I guess, who in society sets beauty standards? Before we get to that, I want to introduce our special guest for the episode today. So if we want to start on this side, and then we can go around the circle. <laughs> I love it though. Let's just keep going. Okay. Hi, everyone. My name is Jade. Um, I am a certified personal trainer, and my business name is Made by Jade Fitness, and I'm here from Baltimore, Maryland. I know that's right. Yes. Hi, everyone. My name is Janae, aka Yay Your Nay, and I'm the owner of Yoga with Nate LLC here in Baltimore, Maryland, and I'm a certified 200 hour yoga instructor, meditation facilitator, and mindfulness and wellness lifestyle blogger. All this stuff. Yeah, nice. Love to see. Hi, my name is Samantha Brooks. I'm with Trainer Thrive Wellness. I'm a certified holistic nutrition coach and a certified personal trainer. We got some boss women in know, here. Right? <laughs> literally, <laughs> literally, literally. So I know right now I can answer <laughs> the question. So who sets or who do you guys believe sets society's beauty standards? Hmm. Black I, women. I know, I was about to say that. Definitely <laughs> black women. And then I think media takes its its own way of expanding it, how the world wants us to see it. That's my personal opinion. But black women is the standard across the board. Of course, always. Always. Forever. I think historically <laughs> from the fields to the kitchen to the salons, the saloons, the hairstyles, mm -hmm. like we're there, we set the mm -hmm. standard. Mm -hmm. do, you, do you guys believe that like the Kardashians have like this huge influence on like the black culture beauty standards, like do you think that they have kind of spearheaded that mm. and people have followed or do you think it has strictly been black women? No, I think it's black women. I, I'm not even a Kardashian fan. I'm a sick Oh yeah, me too. Mm. <laughs> I agree. I'm not, I've never been a Kardashian not fan, not but they leverage their I was about to say, if you ask society, yeah. Right, their, their presence is so prominent and I feel like they've really learned how to leverage their social media to kind of grow as a brand. So yes. as much as we may target a culture, the reality is their social media influence is, I mean, it's huge. It's huge. I, so, I, I agree with that. I think, and the reason why I say even still, their social media influence is huge, but it's based off of black women. And that's, that's the game. It's right based there. off of black, yeah. it's literally like, based off of black women. They want to get the big booties, the, the lip little fillers, lips, the yes. curly hair, car their blood. kids. Yes, like mm -hmm. Khloe Kardashian yesterday, put, or the other day I saw on Twitter, how she like, you know, got a new, like she's tapping into her curly, naturally curly hairstyle. And it's just like, girl. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There was black men. Hey, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Like it's, and that's why, like, they, you know, which on a business level, they do anything. Like, sure, of course. They're going to get the coin. Exactly. <laughs> they're going to get to the coin. Um, but it's definitely mimicking black culture. And gotcha. That's the face. Now, do you guys feel like the mimicking of black culture is getting out of hand in regards to, like, BBL culture and lip fillers and nose jobs? Like, do you believe it's really getting out of hand or getting to that point where, like, we're at this point of, like, no return where society feels like, we have to look a certain way or like, you know, dress a certain way in order for us to like be appealing. Do you, like, do you think it's getting out of hand though? I think we are able to see its face because of social media. We have the filters that look like these Botoxes and these enhanced features. But if we go back to two, two decades ago, they're still in the magazines and we can ask our brown girls today, what, what is it that you see? What, is, what are the images? And it's not just on social media, but it has also been in the magazine of having brighter skin, white is better, um, straighter hair, but do you get access to looking at black magazines or black film type things, whereas social media now is like, this is what it is, but we know that there's something further back that we could refer to that this is what it started, this is where it started, yeah. but social media for sure has in the influence. I personally think it's really getting out of hand, and I feel like at this rate that we're going, it's just gonna get worse and worse. Like, you know, a lot of these teenagers, I don't wanna say kids, but teenagers are growing up with like body dysmorphia, yes. and 
they don't like the way they look and because they see all of these celebrities with big booties and big breasts and yeah. full lips and long hair and then you think you have to be like that. So it's really kind of like scary to me to think mm -hmm. that like or my child is gonna be thinking that they have to look like X, Y, and Z to be approved by a man or approved by their peers. And I feel like a lot of things nowadays, people do stuff to like be, appro be approved by men, but yeah. approved yeah. by society. Yeah. 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 So it's really getting kind of, it, it definitely is getting out of hand. Like BBL fashion is getting out of hand. Yeah. You mm -hmm. got rips and tears. Yeah. Yeah. Who, who gonna wear something with a tie? Right yes. yeah. The financial burden of that is crazy yeah. too. Like having to spend a whole bunch of money, but then you have to spend money on your maintenance. And yeah, to keep it up. And keeping it up and, and everything. And Rastique said something really important. Like it's getting out of hand, not because people can't do what they want with their bodies, What's getting out of hand is just this this lack of self love of to who you are and understanding your body. I know after the fitness people here really understand how important it is, even on the level of if you choose to do it naturally. It really is getting out of hand, even some of the goals that people are starting to create. But outside of that, I was a middle school science teacher, so I have talked to kids. I know what they look like, they expect. You know, I had some of my kids they're like, "Oh, Miss George, I want to train with you. I want to work out with you. I want my butt to look fat. I want this, that." And I'm like, you know, well, tell me why? Because hey, maybe you just want to look, you know, get a little healthier, but. Even my nieces, I mean, I'm talking about my teenage nieces have come to me like, I want a flat stomach and I want a big butt, Auntie J. And I'm like, well, why those two of mm -hmm. everything? Why, you know, what, yeah, what, yeah. what sparked you to want that versus yeah, yeah. I just feel like I'm getting a little big or, you know, I want to work out a little bit more and I see where it's coming from. You know, yeah. I, I was sparking the questions. I knew the answer. But right. it's just one of those things where you realize, you know, our kids, hey, you can strive to look how you want. I want you to also love who you are exactly. yeah. and know that, hey, I can change my body any which way form. But what's the reason? Because if it's to keep up with the Joneses, the Joneses going to change, babe. Exactly. You know, I was just going to say, exactly. think about how it's it was when we were in middle school. Right. We were the, in the magazines or on MTV, they were skinny. Yeah, yeah, Aaliyah, it's Aaliyah. Aaliyah, Aaliyah, Aaliyah was it. tiny. Yeah. And it. then now it's like, well, dang, do I want to be a little chunky? Do I want to have exactly. a little chunky? Like, it's exactly. changed but so honestly, much. Honestly, this is, if you guys really think about it, like, this is a conditioned mindset, right? Mm -hmm. Let's go back to, yes. as you mentioned, right, historically, Black was never really beautiful. No. The big fat lips we were made fun of. Mm -hmm. um, the big butts, you know, Every big mom in the hair. kitchen, mm -hmm. right? The hair was never, never celebrated. From then being under the whitening effect, mm -hmm. right? To everything, skinny models. Mm -hmm. um, Tyra Banks, the runway show. Mm -hmm. Everybody wanted to be skinny minis. Um, and actually, the black culture is kind of behind in terms of plastic surgery until BBLs came around, right? Yeah. Because the white women in other cultures were getting the nose jobs and the, the, you know, the lifts and everything else, right? And then black women come in, and now the BBLs are just oh, taking, off. taking, off. taking off. And yeah. what's so, crazier is, like, now people are getting their BBLs taken out. Yes. Taken out. Yes. So yes. now, yes. You know, everybody, everything, like, repeats itself. So, like, they talk about, because I... It's always about the Kardashians that like have set the trends, but like even they taking their BBLs out now. People are mm -hmm. straight striving for a more natural, natural look. look. So it's just crazy how it just now they concerned about their health and like my health yeah. is at jeopardy. It was always in jeopardy. Yeah. <laughs> 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 you didn't get it. <laughs> but even social media with some of the influences, right? Yeah. Like, I mean, fitness trainers. Yes. You go online and the fitness trainers they're doing butt inserts. Yes. You know, they're showing you you're pushing your breasts up. Yeah. I mean it's. I don't think natural beauty will ever really exist in terms of um, what that perception is with social media, because it's always going to be something they're promoting. Yes. Yeah. And the problem is that people, like people, people are forgetting that natural beauty is uh, natural beauty is going to shift amongst anybody. That's it's not right. a one look fits all. That's it's literally right. different. And too many people want to look like one thing until the next thing is popping. And the yep. next thing is popping. It's like, look, y'all already learned to love yourself. Right. I mean, right. and look, go for what you love. If you like this girl look like that, then go for her. Don't expect that girl to turn into her. Like, we gotta stop expecting people to be what they're not. Yeah. yeah, going off of what you were saying about conditioning, I think a lot of the, the heavy weight is the instant gratification behind mm -hmm. the validation and yeah. which people are seeking seeking at any age, if especially if you're not comfortable within your own body. So you have to externally go out and get that. Um, but also, I feel social media has also pushed black beauty forward, which I think has you know allowed us to turn back into you know where we are now, trying to figure out. People appropriate. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> yeah, right. you want a natural beauty, but yeah. you know, you're the face. This is I great. agree. And the younger generation is bold, so they're speaking out, and they're kind of yes. like I, I feel like they're a little more radical in terms of like showing it's okay to be different. 
Um, you know, they're showing all different types of beauty and yeah. what that looks like, you know. So social media, you're right, it does have a good and bad influence it's depending on how it's used, yeah. you know, when it comes to beauty. Yeah, yeah. yeah I agree. No, I, I definitely agree with that because even from like, like modeling back when I was 20, I'm 29 now, so back when I was 23 to 29, like even agencies now, like I, you know, couldn't get signed back when I was 23 because I was actually too thick mm -hmm. wow. where okay. <laughs> wow i know right but now it's like they're embracing like yeah. you know the the um you know just heavier weight women and just thicker just being but, but thicker. who made that happen can we, all, can we, can we go ahead can we, we go ahead black girls rihanna rihanna that, rihanna really yeah. open it up because what did victoria's secret do after rihanna right. started showing all yeah. body types in her lingerie all right. of a sudden right. victoria's secret got the thick models and they got this and i'm yeah. like oh, wow. like, oh, wow. like oh, wow. oh, wow. i'm wow. i think that that's a true testament to how women's bodies evolve like We've, I'm a personal hard, die hard Rihanna fan, but like we have seen her from being a teenager to becoming a woman yeah. and the influx yeah. of her being pregnant, her not being pregnant, just from, yeah, you know, just any, literally, yes. you know, that's Thank true mama. beauty mm -hmm. right there is, you know, how it evolves. Yes. Yes. But look at, so like 1920s with the corsets, you know, mm -hmm. titanium, they're pulling you tighter yes. and tighter, yeah. so your waist is cinched, yes. right? Yeah. Then we get the waist trainers, yeah. and everybody wants to wear the waist trainers, mm -hmm. so their waists are cinched. Mm -hmm. um, and then even from like aesthetic beauty, right, like so I used to work at MAC Don't Makeup, think about RuPaul days and everybody else with the contouring, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The cheekbones and the high. Just recently, did some of these makeup lines start making darker shades? Yep. Yeah. Everybody yeah. wants to be yeah. lighter, wider, yeah. the pie. So it it really is just. I mean, this has been going on, going on for so long. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. So it's across right. the board in beauty and health, it just goes across everything. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. So I do have a question. So with you guys in your own practices, like for I guess kind of pushing that like self love and that long term like that longevity aspect of self-love like how do you guys kind of translate that through your business if you if you do mm -hmm. like, today. Yeah, that's a great question uh, I actually do I think it's very important I'm big on body positivity um, it's something that I've been shifting this last year in my business because I noticed amongst my consultations you know I hear a lot of similar things most people definitely want to lose the gut they want to grow the butt it's just a big you know thing and that there's nothing wrong with that but um I know that I tell people especially if I get like the picture I want like her I'm like okay Let's shift this a little bit. Yeah. You know, um, sometimes, you know, we had these unrealistic goals. And I say that they're unrealistic. Not that over five, six, ten years you can't grow a body look how you want to look. But you have to also know genetics plays a part. At the mm -hmm. end of the day, um, I know when it comes to my family, for example, the women, we have naturally strong looking arms. So when people are like, dang, your arms look good. I'll be very honest. Oh, genetically, this is something that's not hard for me to do. Yeah. It's, it's in my genetics, right? I tell people it's Jay's been looking fit since, since ninth grade. Yeah. And you, you know that, right? And you know yes. me for how many years. And I've yes. always, people always say, like, hey, you look strong. And I'm like, yeah, but that's just how I'm going to look. I look like that when I'm out of shape. I look like in shape. Wait, and I, tell, yeah, so I, exactly. I explain it to people. Like, you can't grow your body look how you want to look, but you show me a picture of this fashion over model that <laughs> has a BBL and, and titties that sit up here. Like, 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 the photo is in hand. Yeah, it's often yeah. things I'm like, you know, let's let's talk about your body and what on your body. You know, I just shift the conversation amongst them and just let them know, like, hey, what on your body changed? What would you like it to look like versus this picture? That's mm -hmm. personally how yeah. I feel about it. I don't mm -hmm. know about y'all. Yeah. Yeah, I'd say the same. Um, so my brand, Train to Thrive Wellness, I really try to thrive on like mind, body, spirit. So really a mindset yes. approach because mm -hmm. I feel like. No matter what you do, it all starts with the with yeah, the, the a mind. mindset shift, yeah. mm -hmm. right? And so from that, you can kind of determine how you view yourself, mm -hmm. self esteem, self perception, um, and from there, really set your goals up, right? Because mm -hmm. what you mentally believe, everything else will follow. Mm -hmm. So I just yes. try to really get them to lock in on the mindset shift and understanding lifestyle changes. So not the microwave, kind of like you mentioned, like we're in this get fit quick, yes. you know, we want quick yeah, results. It's not, like, it's not can you sustain that? Exactly. So when you create a mindset shift, it's just a part of your lifestyle. Yes. Yes. You know what I mean? Because yes. your, mind, your mind has to make a decision first and then your body will follow. Yes. Your mind is you can get quick one results, of the greatest right? things yeah. that we can lock into that just takes Great. you to different levels. Exactly. So I feel like when you do that, everything you can do everything anything. else. Anything. Yes. 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 For yeah. my business, you kind of touched on that. It definitely begins with the mindset and the awareness. And with um, yoga, a lot of that starts on the inside. Mm -hmm. And so body awareness, self-awareness are huge things because you want to look internally. And a lot of the healing and that momentum, when you're able to, to connect mentally with self and see self internally and also externally, that literally starts from the inside mm -hmm. out and then you reflect that, that glow. We love that. Yeah. I love <laughs> Personal experience. Um, I've used that a lot. Um, for me personally, I was able to heal my 
my skin because I had my anxiety, it messed up my stomach, and I just had questions, and the dermatologist wasn't really helping me too much, and I just had to do my own research, oh, wow. and it's like, this is how you gotta connect the dots, and if you're able to do that for yourself, you can help to motivate other people to know, to encourage them and to instill um, and remind them that healing is a process, and it's not linear at all. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. at all. Yeah. so, one quick question before we go to break. What's one thing that you would tell your younger self about self-love, love, love yourself or spiritual healing anything that uh basically from what you've been through what, was, what would you tell your younger self one quick thing mm -hmm. uh, girl that's the babe <laughs> 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 i would say choose yourself mm -hmm. yeah choose yourself Always. That's tough. I, like, I got a lot to say to my little girl. <laughs> I would say, Man. girl, you define what beauty is. Yes. Yes. It is, you are beautiful. Yes. I know, that's right. Come on, Evie, you too. Oh, me too? Yeah, everybody. Um, <laughs> I would probably tell my younger self, girl, you it. Yes. It's a little bit so you not. It's you, for me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think I, I would tell my younger self, like, yeah, like, stop doubting yourself. Like, you, every, you everything that you want and have you already embodied so like don't look out outside of yourself mm -hmm. for it yeah mm -hmm. and i would tell my younger self to love yourself first and always yes. put yourself first yes. and foremost it's okay to be selfish yes yes, yes. 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 <laughs> so on that we'll be right back after this break hi i am jessica kidd founder of house of bombshell beauty and lifestyle brand based right here in Baltimore, Maryland and salon owner of House of Bombshell Beauty Parlor. Shop with us online at www.thehouseofbombshell.com and unleash your inner bombshell today. You say that you love me, is it true? You say I'm the only one that's all for you. Okay, make me feel away. Make me feel away. Shot is all the dangerous. Just fuck me like I'm famous. Yeah, I've been so. So, welcome back. We're on to topic number two. So, the quote of the day is everything has beauty, but not everyone sees it. So what do what do y'all think about that? How do that hit y'all? What nerves do it start to tingle? Where we at with it? Do they hedges? Um, I feel like I, I would say like the new reformed me now is okay with everyone not thinking that I'm beautiful or not understanding like what my aspect of beauty is or whatever. Like I'm okay with that, but. Asked me a couple of years ago, I would have been, you know, very insecure about like not fitting into the box that, you know, everybody considers to be beautiful or so. So, and, yeah. I, and I think your perspective is really what my thought process, which is I don't think it's actually as negative as somebody might think it is. I think it really just shows that beauty is in the eye of the beholder. We've heard mm -hmm. that quote, which is I'm going to look at something and say, hmm, that piece of art is beautiful. And the next person I'm like, I don't know what I'm looking at. Yeah. Like, mm -hmm. And it's okay because it hit me how it's supposed to hit me, just like, you know, quotes or people or lessons. Who's supposed to reach with the pastor say in the church? It's for somebody and for everybody. That's right. Like, I think it's the same thing. Somebody. You know, beauty is all about perception. Mm -hmm. yeah. Simple, right? But yeah. it's like if you have that confidence, you kind of set the tone of what it looks like. To, so you can define it. It's yeah. all up to you to how to define what beauty is to you. Yeah. And it's also subjective, but you can also create your own meaning. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I don't know, it hits me a little different for some reason because I feel like a lot of people, like not even on a, like an outward appearance of like beauty, I feel like a lot of people don't feel as themselves as beautiful or like they don't feel the beauty within themselves. So like mm -hmm. other people can see like, oh my gosh, like you're the most beautiful person ever, mm -hmm. Janae, but like inside you're like, where? Like, I know, yeah. right? Where? Yeah. I mean, and that happens. Like, yeah. it, it, and it I, happens. And I feel like today that happens far too often. Like, basically, from what we were talking earlier, with all of the different things that you see on social media, a lot of people lack that self love, that self worth. In, on the inside, and so they don't even see themselves as beautiful. Like I feel like my, like I, I had somebody tell me all the time, like you get compliments all the time, and you just say thank you, and I'm just like, I mean, what am I supposed to say? Like, thank you, but yeah. I mean, I don't need the gratification or the, like the validation from somebody else to be like, oh, you're so beautiful. Like, yeah, cause you give it to you. Bitch, yeah. I know I look good. <laughs> I know that. Right. I feel good about myself. You should do that yeah. because we often talk about. I had to correct.
correct, you know, like even just my mom and my sister, you know, you give them a compliment, especially as women. You give each other compliments, like, girl, I like your hair, and you're like, oh, oh this thing, this thing, thing. yeah. I mean, yeah. you know, it's like, just accept the compliment. Yeah. yeah. Even if you don't believe it, accept the confidence. And that's how you start to kind of condition your mind to start believing it, mm-hmm. right? So yeah. you made a good point. Just say thank you. And, yeah. And that's good. I'm not sure. Did y'all see, it was a, a real Instagram, um, and this young lady, she was very mellow tone, very confident. She said, I'm a beautiful woman. I know it. I'm not being cocky. I know this. It's a fact. I'm a beautiful woman. And she said it just like that. Like, I'm not here to argue with you. I'm not also boasting about myself. I'm beautiful. And she was so she was so set in her, her understanding of her beauty that she didn't care the next person. Ten people walked in the room and said, ugly, 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 ugly. I'm a beautiful woman. Mm-hmm. And I think that's just what it comes down to. And like you said, when somebody gives you a compliment, even if in your standard my hair is a mess today, right. that person saw beauty. Thank mm-hmm. you. Mm-hmm. I, it's funny we say that because me and my mom joke all the time that you pick up the most dudes when your hair is not that. Not that. Yo. So like, 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 not when you're like, when, when you're like, not like this, that's when, when I go and my yeah. face is beat and my hair is lit and all of that, it's like, dang, don't look like this. Don't see me? Don't look like this. When I go to the like this, no makeup, like, hair not that. They try to break you. They like, excuse me, sweetheart. But it's like, if I didn't, feel confident in how I look today as okay. compared to how I look when I go to prom or on a hot date or yeah. whatever the case may be, I'm going to feel some type of way when I go home today because nobody tried to talk to me. Exactly. Yeah. And so I just, I think it's so important that, like you said, we, we love ourselves first yeah. because when we look natural, we got to love ourselves yeah, as opposed absolutely. to when our face is beat, I love myself 10 times more when my face is beat. Right. I did that. Yeah. I, I, did that. I did that. How we validate and affirm ourselves for sure is very mm-hmm. important. That can start at you know any point in time in your journey, yeah, right. and I think that that also is very reflective of social media too. You know, like if you're not feeling that, you might feel a little hurt when you get on there and see somebody you don't even know. Yeah. You're like, how I feel tech? Because we're affirming that exactly. within itself. You know, I don't have to have that, but I'm still this. Yes. Affirmations. You're right. Yes. Yes. Power yes. in, in yes. affirmations. Yes. And, um, it's kind of just like you know, I mean, the law of attraction. We know this, mm-hmm. right? You are what you attract. So it's like you have to speak it, you have to believe it, you gotta write it, you gotta affirm it for you to really believe in your mind that that's what it is. Yeah. Yes. Right? But I want to backtrack just a little bit because you made a point earlier how like I guess you saw that really the girl was like uh, I'm like very beautiful and like she said it very calmly and like not boastful. But that made me think about something because I feel like especially as black people in general for one, but then even black women like we can't overly celebrate ourselves yes. or like overly be happy for ourselves mm-hmm. like if mm-hmm. I want to boast about like what I got going on and this this and that like why is it that people come so hard and be like no nah, you need to pipe down like no nah, you ain't really that mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and I am every, 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 Because you know, back in the day, they had to break the black woman, you break the black man, you just break in everything. Real, I saw like, like, we just show up in rooms and just right. We, I saw we shake the room when we walk in. We walk in. I saw a tweet that said, I'm not intimidating, you're just intimidating. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's, like, yeah. Yeah. that's it. That's what I do. Like, that's that's what I'm, like. I, I'm being myself, and, and it's intimidating you. That has nothing that to do with me. Sure. Sure. Yeah, I have been myself in the low, and I'm, you know, this is my girl. I pulled that on somebody. And that was my pot. Oh, that was my bad. Oh, I had to pull up, man. I was like, are you intimidating? Okay. Yes. <laughs> yes. They tried to come for me. They be like, the ones. Yes. They be the ones you got to check. And I was like, so are you intimidated? Or like, yeah. are you inti- Yes. And Girl. I said, or are you just like intimidated by me? And mm-hmm. it, just, it was no answer. But it's just like, I mean, think about let's, let's yeah. be honest here. Okay. Like, it's, it's, I feel like it's okay to be vulnerable in that aspect because some people are like intimidated when it comes to black women, especially because like, yeah. yeah. I'm gonna say what I need to say. It's gonna come out. I mean, we can work this out. I don't have to be a big and you know issue. Like, I'm gonna say what I need to say. But see, you just said something important because <laughs> this young lady, another Instagram reel I saw, even on her voice. So her tone, on the other hand, was very like, I said what I said, don't argue with me. It was very, but people call it aggressive. I like to call it assertive. Assertive. Yeah. But, yeah. you know, she said, a man asked her, like, why you feel like you gotta always be on the defense? Why you feel like you gotta always be hard up? And she was like, when I feel like I can submit to you, then you'll see the other side. See, see, I, I can't <laughs> give you the power. You want me to give you a power? You have to exactly how I feel. You haven't allowed me to give you a. You, 
done nothing that says allow him to lead you, allow him to you know trust him. So of course I'm gonna make sure I'm good. Why would I put I that you. into your hands? I'm not gonna submit to you when you can't even submit to yourself. Mm. And that's in a room with not even black men, with black women <laughs> yeah. as well. Because as a as a black woman, I'm gonna own the room yes. until I feel like okay, we can all share the space exactly. Together. Mm. Because if not, we all go. Somebody has to own the room. Somebody has because to. Because if not, they're going to. Think that walk all over you and exactly and in a room full of black women i'm not gonna let other people walk, walk all over us so if i gotta be the one on 10 i'm gonna be on 10 see, we not, until we all can we be on 10 together. together and that's any room that i walk in because yeah. i'm not gonna let it happen yeah but, black women, women. We, but yes. we also got to do a better job of like supporting each other. Yes. 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 So, yes. I agree. Yes. In a room full That's of black women, yes. Yes. right? Yes. Sometimes yes. it's hard for other women to come in and say, girl, I like your outfit. I right. Like, right? Because mm-hmm. I feel like sometimes, not even sometimes, I feel like we're, con- again, this conditioned mindset of black people in general, but yes. we're just talking black women. Um, we're conditioned of a scarcity mindset too, Ooh. right? Yes. So if I walk in and I have a scarcity mindset, I'm thinking, I don't want you to one up on me. Yeah. So I'm going to just, you know, like I can't give you any praise. Mm-hmm. I can't support you. I can't support you. So like, we got to we gotta uplift and empower mm-hmm. each other, yes. you know, because, because we get so much of that outside of our outside of our culture that's constantly putting us down. We got to do a better job uplifting and supporting each other. And you know yeah. what it speaks on, saying? It speaks on the fact that also if you are securing yourself, it cannot take away to tell the next woman, to tell five women, baby, you're beautiful. Baby, baby, you got it. Your business is popping. I like right. love what you said. Like, right. if you secure what you do, you know that you, and, and mind you, Maybe at that time it, it isn't about you, and maybe you do have a lot going on. But this one girl right now, she is on her. The spotlight's on her. That's right. Clap it up for her. You Clap it up for her. Yeah. And you your power to. and your time will shine at the time it's supposed to. It that's, always you know, has that's to. That's a good that's point it. because and I want to bring it to you because was it two weeks ago? I tweeted about my esthetician. I was like, she did my wax in 15 minutes. I love her. <laughs> and Janae was like, well, dang, who your esthetician? Yeah. And, I, and I added her, and I'm like, oh, it's Bree. She, I, I've been going to her for a year. And Janae was like, oh, that's my girl. I went yeah. to esthetician school with her. That's I love girl. her. Janae could have easily been like, oh, you go to somebody else, let somebody else, you yeah. she's supposed to be my girl. Right. right? Yeah. But mm-hmm. as a black woman, Janae is praising that other black woman. Exactly. But she could have easily been like, oh, it, I thought me and you was cool. Like, you right. let somebody yeah. else do really? yeah. to yeah. you yeah. what yeah. I do? Yeah. That's yeah. crazy. Yeah. And you know the difference, Janae? Confidence in her business and who she is. But guess what? Nobody can do it like you, right? Mm-hmm. That's your power. Yes. And if we yeah. realize that. It could be a million fitness trainers. No one's going to do it like Nobody's going to do it like you. No one's going to do it like you. Nobody's going to do it like you. Like, like, right. So even if you're your own like, power, yeah. you're going to walk around with a mindset of scarcity because somebody's going to take something from you. Yes, right. and, that's, exactly. and that's the thing right there. I feel like a lot of people need to realize it's because, like, literally, there's so much Like there's so much out here. Everybody can eat. Yeah. Like, Absolutely. everybody can eat because mm-hmm. everybody is different. Y'all all three are in the same type of business, but all three of y'all are very different. Mm-hmm. We all can be on the same thing, but mm-hmm. how I do it versus how they do it versus how everybody does it, it's completely different. Everybody co- like comes to it attracts different type of people. Yeah. So I don't understand, like you said, the whole desperation thing. I feel like a lot of people nowadays move out of desperation, what that's desperation out of their business, desperation for yeah. love, yeah. desperation mm-hmm. for money. Mm-hmm. And like you can't do anything out of desperation, you have to do everything out of love. Mm-hmm. And intention. Every, yes, intention. Everything out of love. And, 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 and I know for myself, and I use this term, like I'll fire a client. Everybody's not for you. Yeah. And that can come down to your doctor, that come down to your esthetician, that come down to your trainer, that come mm-hmm. down to your dentist, that come down to the grocery store you go to. Your therapist. The reality is your therapist, <laughs> it go down to all of that. Mm-hmm. And it's okay to be like, hey, her technique, whatever it was, it worked better for me. That don't mean there's no love for the other person. Right. And it's okay to say that. You have to know what you need. A lot of people do stuff out of this loyalty that is loyalty helping you? Is it helping them? Is it hurting both of y'all? Because you got to be honest with yourself. And you exactly. sometimes got to be honest with people. Mm-hmm. And that's also come down to like just knowing like, hey, this is my standards. This is my, these are my boundaries. And something's yeah. being crossed right now. I'm going to put my foot down and make changes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And for sure, for sure. Right? Stop trying to hog up everybody because you just want to, yes. you know, flex on Instagram. Yes. And get a big following. <laughs> like if you know that's not your niche, yeah. I know certain things Thanks. I don't do. Well, I can, I'm, I'm just happy want to do to Baby, I'm going to send you right on over. And you know, because I don't do yoga. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's yeah. it. You got and we all yoga. can't do everything. So that's the beauty of not being able to know everything or know everybody. Yeah. Because, you know, that's where, how you can build a network. But that's the power of network. Right. right. Yeah. Yeah. Building that connection. Yeah. Yes. Exactly. And, but I want to go back to this, like, scarcity mindset. So, like, speaking on that, I, like, I had a moment. I realized, now, this may get real like spiritual which is interesting but i've realized like as a society we we operate on this heavily 
masculine mm. dominated like type of vibe and when I say masculine I don't mean male I mean like masculine energy mm -hmm. type of setting where it's it's about like you know get into the bag work 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 like scarcity all that stuff and it's crazy I've realized that society or like how we've kind of been bred in society we, we've been bred to think this scarcity mindset whether it comes like comes down to like resources like they always telling us like oh we running out of this running out of that but it's it's really it's really 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 sad because in the grand scheme of things like when you step back from like this man-made physical world we literally it's abundance every freaking way like they will literally make you think that the like it's, it's no more trees in the world, like type stuff. Right. Like, yeah. like, like, like that's yeah. how they make you yeah. think. And then it trickles down into your everyday life with your interactions with people when you, you know, thinking that everybody can't eat when, when you can. But of course, you know, seeing things on social media or like on the news where they tell you, like, oh, like the whole Amazon and burnt down, right. so ain't no more trees. Right. And stuff. Like, just that whole idea just about scarcity. So I, I've been wanting to, like, kind of get people to this space where they kind of like shift their like subconscious mind through affirmations Absolutely. or through you know just repetition like that's how yeah. you change yeah. that mindset to get yourself in this space of understanding that abundance is mm -hmm. like that everything is infinite yeah. you yes. know so i think that's a great point i think i mean at the end of the day take religion out of it right? yeah, yeah, yeah at the end of the day to, to me, for me you got to believe in something of a higher being yeah. right? yes right and i feel like if you do that um having a level of, of faith that's all you need to know that whatever's for you is going to be for you. Yeah, Nobody can take that away. Um, so for me, I think it's really about tapping into that, you know, on a spiritual level to know that, like, it, it doesn't, I mean, don't operate out of fear yeah. is the whole yeah. point. That whatever's for you can manifest. You have the power to do that. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yes. Now, I do have, so Janae, through, through your yoga classes mm -hmm. and everything, like, I guess how do you... How do you like vet your um, client? Like, do you vet your clients? My clients like, find me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, but they they seriously like. I thank God honestly because he's he. It almost seems like he hand chooses these people that comes to me. Um, I work with clients on a larger scale, and then of course, like if I'm out in the street, I'll have you know just regular people. But they'll come across all ages from children. I work with. Adolescents, um, you know, people our age, people that are young adults, and I really love the young adult hub. I've always really loved that that age group of development because I enjoy mentorship. So I think for me, a lot of this, the yoga and my background is also in psychology has mm -hmm. just layered mm -hmm. so nicely to be able to relate to people, to be relatable, but to also open up space. And um, I might not be able to relate with you, but you have the space to just take what it is that you need or come and get what it is that you need as me being a guy. Um, so, I don't know, it, they just, it's the vibes. Because <laughs> gotcha. I, guess, I guess for me, like, I've always been interested in, like how, like, with being like a personal trainer or like a meditation teacher or a yoga teacher or, or like, just anyone, even a therapist, like how do you get people to realize that the mindset shift is what's needed like the first step, you get what I'm saying? I would, like, I would say it's practice. Yeah. Like encouraging them to, to practice what it is that they come and they say is an issue. So if you come mm -hmm. and you say like, I don't know, I'm super anxious. I say, okay, if you practice these things, these things will help you and they don't necessarily get it until they, they practice it. Mm -hmm. So if you say that this position is going to help with yeah. this body ache or this thing, or if I say doing this certain type of deep breathing is going to help with this type of anxiety, then unless they practice it, they're not going to buy into it. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's with anything. If I practice being as nutritional as you guide me to be, mm -hmm. then I'm going to know like, oh shoot, she was right. Now I've now I've bought yeah. into because I've practiced it. I've practiced yes. those because I've practiced results. buying those. Oh, yeah. I've practiced doing that. Mm -hmm. So I think it's practice. Yeah. Yeah. And the student always finds the teacher and even after a while the teacher is going to kind of have to phase back mm -hmm. and the student might either expire the teacher and find another teacher which is great because you want to continue your growth but I think to, again like it's all about space opening up that ability to listen and to intuitively feel what the client needs energy wise physically wise mentally and being able to guide them and 
enforcing that practice because at the end of the day, we're just, again, the teacher, we're in that position to be a model, but you have to do the work. And I think that that's where a lot of the stuff that we're talking about today, people don't realize is that you have to do the work yeah. Yeah. on whatever level, yes. business, yes. you know, yeah. inner work, yes. the outside work, yes. it starts yeah. with the go, like mm -hmm. now. And, yeah. and I think it also has to do with like being authentic to yourself and yeah. being authentic to your brand. I feel like once you like develop the authenticity, like that's what brings people to you. Or that's what brings people mm -hmm. to you. Like people see that you are you. Mm -hmm. And I feel like I'm like learning that now. Like I don't, I don't have a server or something like that. But like even like my own personal brand and the things that I do, I, I see like the more that I'm authentically rustique and like unapologetically rustique. Girl, I love you. Like, mm -hmm. for yeah, real. literally, yeah. literally. Like, literally. Can you help me with this? Yeah. Like, can you help yeah. me with this? Like, even, like, even the other day, like, I unarchived all of my pictures on Instagram from like 2013. So I'm like, I was trying to be so perfect and try to be so like fit the mold of what like the influencers are, or what people do on Instagram. But it's just like that's not me. I'm not perfect. Yes. I'm not like this. So I, you can see my journey. You can see me from literally high school days, my like, yeah. self from high school days all the way until mm -hmm. now. But I think it's all about being authentic, and we are all authentic, knowledgeable young ladies out here that will be right back after this break. I just wanna spend my life with you all day. You say that you love me, is it true? You say I'm the only one that's all for you. Okay, make me feel away. All right, so we're bringing it back in for our last topic. And so the first question I have for you ladies is, since we're all health and fitness beauty gurus out here, I don't know why I said beauty, but everybody's beautiful. So yes. <laughs> but what does health play in beauty? Like your, well, yeah, what does health play in like your beauty and all of your appearance? Like how important is your health when it comes to those factors? Or is it important? I'm sure it is, but. When I feel good, I look good. Mm -hmm. And good it could be good. meditating first and just having that inner conversation with self affirmations, all that stuff, journaling, whatever, and coming back to 10 versus, you know, having a nice sweaty workout or a walk or a nice good yoga session, whatever, physical or non physical, it starts with that mental check where am I at? What do I need to do? Do I need to exert some physical energy or do I need to like mentally exercise and get in there? Yeah, again, it reflects on outside. I think um, one thing I've learned with um, fitness is that a lot of times people that come to me for fitness because of actual health issues, um, that does have an effect on how they feel because it's, it affects you mentally. When your doctor says you are at risk of um, being diabetic, you are um, at risk of having high blood pressure, you know, all these things when you start realizing, oh, I need to change how I eat, I need to start moving my body more. And because of that, they already are starting to not feel good about themselves. So then, of course, it affects how you look, right? I had, client, had one client who um, now is on her success story, but when she first came to our consultation, she said to me, she said, I don't even look in mirrors anymore. Mm -hmm. That's where she was at. And that was probably, I've never heard anybody tell me that. And I told her, I said, everything in my power, we're going to make sure that when you look in the mirror, you mm -hmm. smile. And now, I mean, she'll tell anybody who walked through the door, like, y'all, I couldn't even see my toes before. Now I can look down, I can tie my shoes, I can do all these things. Like, I love myself, I love my body. It's changed so much, you know. She had a mom, she, you know, kind of our old typical story. She let go of herself and she forgot about herself. And once she started working on that, coming to the gym six days a week changed everything for her. So I tell people at the time, you know, sometimes, thank you, sometimes, you know, people think that fitness is just about trying to get a big butt and a flat stomach. And no, that how you look can be just mentally, mm -hmm. and now she walk and she smile, and she's mom, she always, she's like, I remember when I couldn't even keep up with everybody, now I'm doing all these things I couldn't do day one. And so, I work at something. Exactly, <laughs> not a matter of fact, she meant I'll, she I'll use her, I'll be like, do you mind showing her this, you know, working with a new yeah. client or something, and she'll, she jump right in. So, um, it's, I think, so much bigger than what we talked about earlier with just this body positivity or lack of body positivity. Um, it's a big deal that people have to realize internally. You know, I've had clients that don't even take their blood pressure medication anymore. That's a big deal. I told you the time I said, yeah. scale is great. But that right there might be one of my best success stories of helping somebody. Her doctor said, oh, I'm taking you off that medication. Yeah. These, these numbers look great. Yeah. Uh, you don't even need to take that anymore. Your body yeah. can regulate itself. That is important. Yes. Yeah. And it's so important. It's, it's supposed to do that. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, and I think health, I think, as you mentioned, when you look at health as like total well-being, right, mind, body, spirit, it yes. goes beyond just aesthetics of what we look like physically. Exactly. Um, I think you made a great point. You are, I mean, when you when you feel good, 
you look good, mm -hmm. right? No matter how, what shape, size you are, mm -hmm. um, when you're caring for your mental health, you know, how does that reflect in terms of how you even speak, mm -hmm. um, the things you say to yourself, the level of confidence you build. Um, and then even from a nutrition standpoint, I always tell people that, that silly quote, corny, you are what you eat, but it's so true. Sure. Right? Sure. You start valuing your body as something that you're not going to go, no offense, but let's just call it out, McDonald's. Mm -hmm. You're eating dollar meals. Aren't you worth more than a dollar? I know that's so right. when you start valuing yourself, of, of something more um, and valuing your health. I feel like it starts to build your confidence, you feel better, um, and that just all reflects on the outside. That's true. Watch your, your mind and your body, um, everything transforms. That's true. Yeah. And, and I'm talking about what you, what you take in is going to show. So people come to me and say, but I eat relatively well. They got acne on their face, they have the stomach that's sticking out. And of course, mm -hmm. I tell people, you know, I'm not your doctor, so you can have a whole medical issue going on. I let people know as a yeah. disclaimer. We're gonna do a couple things, and if it doesn't work, I would tell you seek a physician. But the reality is, you it's easy to think you're doing everything right, but those small things, I only drink on brunch, and you're drinking two pitches of mimosas. Like, girl, that's <laughs> not what that's, that adds up. Like, that is a lot. Man. That can be a lot for you. And, you know, I tell people all the time, like, um, you have to be mindful of whatever your goal is, especially people, they'll want to. You know these 30 day goals and i tell people all the time like you ain't get out of shape in 30 days you want me come get you in shape in 30 days like oh i thought i was gonna lose more than two pounds babe there's a science behind this like mm -hmm. it, it is so much deeper than you would move your body for 30 days and not even really 30 days because you're not working out for 30 days yeah. but you, you got dedicated <laughs> for 30 days and you yeah. know those days you was dedicated you thought that was going to change 10 years of trash it's a journey it's a journey it's a, it's a, a journey process. Yeah. A whole process so like what is what is or some things that you think that somebody should do to initiate their process. You know, it's about to be the beginning of the year. Everybody mm -hmm. wants to start on their New Year's mm -hmm. resolutions. What are some things people can start doing today? As yeah, I was about to say, December, don't start on January day, day, first start December like, 19th, man. what are some ways they can start their journey? Yeah, I'll say, um, yeah, I'm a huge advocate of that. When we take the new year, new me, yeah. you know, the ball's gonna drop and you're gonna be the same you. Same you. <laughs> so it's like, be the best version of yourself now, yeah. right? Yeah. So small steps, right? Let's take very, very baby small steps. Number one, I always tell people, get an accountability partner. Um, and that's maybe investing in a coach, because sometimes, yeah. like you said, we can't do it by ourselves, right? Mm -hmm. So you need that level of accountability. Um, but it could be something, when we talk, I'll go from nutrition and fitness. Nutrition, it could be something as simple as drinking more water. Mm -hmm. Cause that's yes. some timers on your phone. Mm -hmm. Go get your water bottle that's aesthetically appealing and just say, I'm gonna start with just drinking three bottles a day. That's a baby step. Cause now you're ingraining some lifestyle practices, mm -hmm. right? Um, or you'll just eat a green vegetable every day. Mm -hmm. Like these small steps lead to a big impact. Mm -hmm. In terms of fitness, just get moving. Yeah. Like we wanna yeah. put so much in our mind of what it has to look like. We have to work out for an hour. It's like an all or nothing mm -hmm. mindset. That doesn't exist. Mm -hmm. It's okay if you haven't worked out in a while, if you haven't reached your goal, whatever it is, you can just start with a walk. Yep. You can start with, you know, doing a YouTube video, a 15, 20 minute YouTube, do some breath work. Yep. But like, just get moving, um, set a small goal for yourself, something that you know is achievable, mm -hmm. and then you celebrate along the way, and that kind of keeps you going, you know oh, what I mean? Oh, that makes sense. It makes a lot of sense because I myself need to get back into the gym, and I have this like, this like all or nothing like mindset, especially with me being an athlete from before, mm -hmm. like, I never knew how to actually just work out. Like, we did, like, basketball workouts. Mm -hmm. and yeah, like, actually you. never yeah. worked out. Yeah. So, I told myself, I was like, Janae, like, if you don't do nothing else, just go. To yeah, the yeah. Just walk like, in there. Right. Like, walk in there. Literally walk in there. Like, walk in there. Touch something. And <laughs> touch something. <laughs> Days a week, and we only practice five days a week. 
I'm never gonna yeah. I'm never yeah. gonna take that step. And even if it's just like showing them a movement or if I just help them pass the ball, just something so small. But I go to I pack my bag every night with my sweatpants or my go. shorts and my t shirt. Because if not, I'm wearing what I wanna wear, yeah. which is yeah. jeans or some slacks and yeah. I'm not helping. I'm not even helping them at that point because yeah. you gotta model it. You gotta yes. show them. Yes. 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 That's, 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 that's so right. small. And you're showing them. Exactly. Yeah. Somebody can say like, "Well, that's just so." Yeah, but it it goes it adds up. up. It adds I know up. if I don't do it that night before, if I'm running late in the morning, you never I'm not packing that bag, bag yeah. and it's over. And it's over. Do it. I don't have time to go home and change. I don't have time for that. I don't have that luxury right yeah. now. Yeah. So yeah. that those small steps. They for help. me, I tell clients, especially the clients that come to me that are really struggling nutrition, like, you know, the gym, I don't mind it. If I can come in, I come to the gym, I'll do what you say. It's, a, it's a eating. I say, okay, um, I'm about to FaceTime you. You know, FaceTime, open your cabinets, get a trash bag, put that in trash. Ooh. Put that in trash. <laughs> I said, if it's not in your house, you can't go grab it. I mean, if you're that desperate and you get in your car and you drop to the store and go buy it, then we got bigger issues at that point. But, you know, for the most part, I know I've done it. I've done it. I've, like, you know, you get that more, I'll be like, I'm going to go clean my pantries out. And then I might, I'm, I'm a chip girl. I like the crunch. So I realize I got to change the crunch. So I'll be like, all right, let me go get an apple still. I'll go, I'll go reach up for them barbecue chips and be like, dang, I threw them away. All right. I said, What's, what, what can I change? And then I'm like, get this Granny Smith apple. Go about my business, and you know, and you just at the time when you keep doing it though, as funny as it is, I be like, I don't even need that. I don't want that. I know what I need. I know it's working. It's showing my body, and that's what I basically like teach my clients. And they'll tell me like, you know, that works. Like now that it's not there, I can't have it. And since yeah. I can't have it, I choose something else. But I'm not gonna starve. Right. Yeah, and and that's the discipline. Because I tell people you can enjoy it, but there is a level of discipline that might not always be enjoyable, but it's necessary and it adds up for the goal that you want. Mm-hmm. Sometimes we gotta do what we don't want to do to get to where we want to go. Yeah. In the fitness industry, and that's and I'm not talking in an unhealthy way, but me telling you, love yourself, girl, eat them barbecue chips because you like it. No, full and well is not about to get you to go. No, mm-hmm. don't eat them barbecue chips. Go away. <laughs> and just to chime in real quick, like we have to also acknowledge that the agenda right now is to keep us sick. Okay? Yeah, yes. so we can recognize. Yes. Hold on, say that. that. We, I was just okay. about to say that. The, the thing we also need to do is educate ourselves. Mm. So if you want to make a choice to change, it starts with ed- education. Mm. Because, you know, you don't just go by what someone tells you. And let's no. be honest, doctors are not advocating for you. No. Right? They want to write your prescription. So it's in your best interest, if you want to live long and feel good while you're living, to advocate for yourself and do some research. So when it comes to nutrition, you realize what's good for your body and what's not. Like, what yeah. serves you and what's not, right? Yeah. So um, you have to know, eating barbecue chips and you're trying to get off your blood pressure medication, you want to start feeling better about yourself, it doesn't okay. work. Doesn't yeah. Work. And then to even to chime on to that, I feel like a lot of people are coming forth about how, you know, black people don't get treated the same within healthcare as it is already. A lot of people mm-hmm. are going to, like you said, you went to all those doctors and you couldn't, they couldn't figure out what was wrong. Like, I feel like that's happening more and more now, especially to black people. But you know, like we were talking about earlier, how we're starting to gain a voice. We're yes. starting to be like, nah, that ain't it. Yeah. Like, I'm gonna figure it out for myself, or yeah. go yep. do my own research. Who can do it. Yes, and then I feel like, yeah, so that's a very important thing. And then to even bring it back to you, you brought up discipline. And I feel like discipline mm-hmm. is, should be in capital letters. Yes. yes. And discipline is <laughs> when, so when important. When you say there's an aspect of discipline yes. that is not enjoyable, that yeah, because because yeah. you, you know like like, be real like, instead of, like trying to manifest certain things like like they say like the best way to manifest is like when you're feeling good, but not realizing no, like there's gonna be some times where I'm not gonna feel. It's good the opposite of comfortable. Process. At some point, yes. you have to understand that just there's both sides are necessary in the journey, right? You want to be comfortable, you want to love what you do, but you also sometimes have to step out your comfort zone to grow. We've heard yeah, it, and it's true. Growth and comfort it, don't coexist. It don't it don't coexist, and you have to know when you need one. Sometimes you need to be in that growth space. I mean that comfort space. Excuse me. Where, you know, right now I'm vibing, I'm ebbing, I'm learning, and I love it. And then you need to be in an uncomfortable space. I usually walk 10, 10 minutes, but today I'm going to walk 15. And that last five might kill me, but now I've grown because 15 has become my new norm mm-hmm. until it shifts. And people have to understand that they think, like, but this hurt. I'm tired. It hurt. I ain't never said it wasn't going to hurt. Right. It's going to be worth it. And then you're building strength. Exactly. And you're building, and you're building mental strength. Right. And you're right. building, you're, you're, um, you're teaching your mind how to adapt to stress. Yeah. Exactly. Right? When you put yourself in those mm-hmm. kind of situations and you learn how to reboot and recoup from that, you now can can learn how to like handle stress when it comes full on in other areas of our life. Exactly. That's why it's so important. And I feel you know, as if gratitude and compassion are also essential. Yes. 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 Yes.
body awareness of how we are rewarding ourselves or validating ourselves when it gets tough, you know, when we're in our physical practice and we're out in the world trying to get it and things like that. So, you know, okay, I was, I didn't have an apple, but I still had them chips. Mm -hmm. I can forgive myself for and, that. And that's 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 great. Great.
see that's not true and things that may be real that also may not mm -hmm. hold as much weight as what we give it. Yeah. Um, one thing that my therapist said when I was going through therapy for my anxiety, she I would bring a whole bunch of lies, uh, self-belief, and she'd be like, well, do you have evidence to support that? And I'm like, she good. Well, that's right. she good. You don't have nothing that you don't have anything that you can tell me that absolutely supports that you can't work out today. Yeah. That right. you can't change your diet. That you can't do a yoga routine. There's nothing in your life that confirms that thought. So yeah, I'm on with these ladies and yeah. right. <laughs> it teaches you how to counter those thoughts. Yes. Right? Like yeah. so I was saying, like if you if someone comes into the gym, first thought. Ugh, it's early. I hate the gym. I don't even really want to be here. I'm fat. You are real. Yes, yes. Like, girl. What's her name? Leave her in the car. Yeah. She's not here today to work out. I was in my class back up the door. I'm like, I need you. I yes, need reset. You to I need reset. You to head over. Yeah, I'd be like, what did you, you say? To. I said, let's change that. Can you find another sentence? I had one question like, and so and now she just catch herself. She's like, I actually, I'm ready and it's going to be a good day. See, though? That's yeah. good. So she wears it right now. And I'm like, I, just, I just look at her like, I give it a mama look. Yeah. What was it? What was it? Okay, let's change it. Dang, Sam, I did want to ask you a question. So real quick, because we know that a lot of our issues and everything do start like in the gut, yes. do you have any, um, I guess like any like quick like detox, like I guess recipes that like any of us could literally do like tomorrow morning? Like something real simple to just start. Like Okay, start. So, these, so, so let's just say the gut, number one, I think when we recognize everything stems from the gut. It's literally like our second brain. So when we start fueling it like that, you want to really focus on eating a whole food plant-based diet, right? So let's take um, like fat diets out of the way. I'm not going to tell you don't eat this, don't eat that. Just what you can start incorporating is more fiber, right? So um, more leafy greens, maybe throw some flax seeds in your smoothie, yeah. maybe throw it on your yogurt. Um, if you eat eggs, that's your preference, eat some more eggs. But like really focus on eating less processed things. So I always tell people, um, when you get a food and you read the back of that label, that's the first thing. Because front of the label is for marketing and advertising. Yes. Back of the label is it's a fail. Fail. So when you look at the back of that label and you see 80 million things you can't pronounce, that's not good. Put it down. Yeah. That's not good for you guys. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right? So whole food, plant-based um, items is what you want to focus more on. Gotcha. Um, so, yeah, more fiber. Throw some supplements in there. I know everyone's on the sea moss craze, but like algaes, right? Mm -hmm. some, some actual algaes to throw into your diet. Gotcha. Um, nuts and seeds. Right for the omegas, um, prebiotics and probiotics. You get that from food, but it could be something as simple as um, sauerkraut or um, like fermented foods or um, you know berries. I mean, it, it kind of all stems around the same cycle, just whole food, whole food, whole fruits, yes. vegetables. Um, your your gut loves uh, diversity. Your gut is like when you eat the rainbow, you're fueling your gut. So when you look at your plate, just try to make it as colorful as possible. Awesome. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. Well, thank you. Thank you. Well, thank you, ladies. That was, I, I needed that. I was like, I got to get my question in. Okay, we close out. We're going to start it tomorrow. But no, start thank, today. Today, yeah. yeah. I know, period. Today. <laughs> Thank you guys. We really appreciate you all for coming on the show today. It was really Thank amazing. You. And um, I don't know if you guys have any last words. I don't know if you have any last words. We'll see. You're good. You're good. Well, Thank yes. you for having us. Yes. Thank yes. you for having us. Yes. Thank you. And we'll be back with another episode next time. Wrapping it up. I just want to spend my life with you all day. You say that you love me. Is it you say I'm the only one that's all for you, okay, make me feel away.